Hello, everybody. I hope you are doing well. I am Radhika Matre, and I am 2016 batch pass out from VCT IT Engineering. Welcome you all to today's tech talk on introduction to data visualization. Let us proceed to the agenda of this topic. We will understand the relevance of data visualization as we move ahead. Mark my words, it is a very relevant skill to have in this era. Yeah, so the agenda for today is data visualization overview. We'll be looking at all the answers to the questions like what is it, where is it used, why is the data visualization used, and what is the overall process of it. So the second point is to give a step-by-step -step walkthrough of the process of end-to-end -end gathering the data to delivering a solution, a dashboard which has data visualizations in it, okay? So the third point, third point is tools and techniques used for developing it. And then we'll have a look at some of the templates, the end developed templates and solutions of the dashboard, and the frequently asked questions regarding data analysis or data visualization. And now, now let us proceed to the first topic, very first topic, which is data visualization overview, which I think is incomplete without knowing the definition of data visualization. As you might have rightly guessed, it is a way to represent the information graphically in a pictorial manner, which is appealing to the users, which is, which is appealing to our eyes. I would like to stop here and give an example for uh, maybe when we are, we are trying to buy something on Amazon or uh, online, what appeals us is the image of that product. The information of the product is, of course, there. But when we see the image, it appeals us more. It, it is relevant to everything, every product, and every field. Okay, Data visualization is not only showing us uh, some graphs or pictures, but it highlights the patterns and trends in the data. For example, if there's a cricket team and there are 10 matches which have been played by the cricket team and there has to be a decision which has to be taken whether this particular cricketer has to uh, has to be taken in the next match or not in the next series or not one of the ways in which it can be decided is by seeing the trend line of the scores of the overs of the runs in particular overs you know by doing that such decisions are made very simple and last but not least, data visualization or dashboard, I would say, help us to get quick insights as to what is to be done next. Okay. Data visualization is also called as interactive visual exploration. Why? Because there are multiple charts on a particular dashboard. And once we click on one chart, that there is interaction, there is link between all the charts. And that is why it is called as interactive visual exploration. We're exploring into some story. We'll see, it is really very fun. We'll see it as we proceed ahead. So in the data analysis process, wherein the raw data, which has no or very less meaning, we are transforming it into an information and data visualization is a very important part of it, okay? Let us move on to the second point as to where is data visualization used. You mark a field, you say a field, and you have it there. Every Each and every field currently and from past many years is using data visualization for making better decisions, regardless of any company or industry, all the varieties of fields are using it. Why? Because it is proven to give information efficiently and for better decision making, of course. So the uh, key areas or the key fields where data visualization is used is finance, marketing, technology, in healthcare sector, in e-commerce as well. Uh, let us consider, for ease of understanding, let us take some example here. Say, uh, if I have finance, for example, I will see what is the record what is the data of all the customers who are buying credit cards what is their usage or um, how is my policy or my promotions that i'm applying on credit cards or debit cards working well should i change them should i alter them should i increase the promotion percentage should i decrease it similar kind of things are applied in marketing as well and technology as well one simple example let me give you on every university website you'll see that there's the graphs or the visualization shown 
for showing the placements of the students in that particular college. So that is one of the example of data visualization itself. So as basic as that, okay? So be it any field, there's a need to visualize the data. And that is why this particular skill, this particular uh, knowledge on visualization, on using which chart and when is really relevant. Okay. Let us move ahead. Okay, so before moving on to what are the benefits of data visualization, I just want to have a quick example, a very, very simple example, where I have the sales data for company ABC. And the company ABC has two products, product one and product two. And it sells, uh, it sells it across two countries, country A and country B. Now I have the uh, sales data in dollars, okay? For 2019, 2020, I see that for country A, product one has $1,000 uh, sales in 2019, whereas in 2020, it has reduced to 500. Similarly, for country B and other products, we have the data issue. So this is a very simple table with only four rows of the data. In my words, there is the actual data is huge, is very huge with GBs of number of rows and it cannot be the the trend or the insight cannot be understood just by seeing the table just by seeing the data this is just a simple example but yet we will understand the importance in this particular example itself so by looking at the data we see that okay product one is not doing well in country a in 2020 so it took me around 30 to 40 seconds to understand this now, if I keep on going row by row to understand what, how is my product performing in both the countries, it will take me a lot of hours considering the amount of data that we actually have for sales or any other kind of data. Okay. So if we transform it into a data visualization, which will uh, look like this, the scenario one, wherein I am looking country-wise breakdown of sale okay based on the product so sale compare sales comparison across countries i see that country a uh, for country a product one is doing uh, really well in 2019 whereas uh, here we see that these are the legends orange one is sales in 2020 and the blue ones are the sales in 2019 so we clearly see that the 19 2019 sales for all the products in both the countries were doing well except for country a product two wherein the sales of 2020 have increased okay but still i get the clear idea here okay this is my status i need to improve uh, the sales of my product because comparing to the last year they are un they aren't doing well but i still there's something missing here i need to see what percentage of sales have increased or decreased so we have that too so this is just a very simple example of showing how a visualization can help us get multiple insights in one picture Okay, so now we have this gray color line. If you can see, it is nothing but percent growth versus last year. So we see that for product one in country A, we see that the percent growth versus last year, that is in 2020, we see that the growth has uh, impacted negatively. It has decreased. The sales has decreased by $500. Similarly, in if for product two in country A, the sale has increased by 8.3%. Similarly, when we combine multiple charts and have interaction in them, we come to a conclusion as to what has to be done next, what actions has to be taken next. Why is it not uh, getting sale, getting sale uh, same equally to the last year? Is it because of some uh, lockdown issue? Is it because of the pandemic? Or is it because of the seasonal thing? Whenever there are festivals, the sale increase. There's the boom in sales. Why? Because there are also promotions, a lot of promotions that are given, right? The Amazon sales, the Flipkart big Indian sales. Yeah. So similarly, there are trends and seasonalities involved as well. But I'm very sure that in this particular example, uh, we, we have seen how much 
impact a simple visualization can put on the on the insights okay now we'll move on to the benefits of it okay this is why it is used extensively everywhere you look you'll see that there is the visualization practice happening because everyone wants to proceed everyone wants everyone wants to make better decisions and not repeat their mistakes okay so there are uh, six points uh, high level points which i will walk through one by one first is to interpret large amount of data of course in this era wherein we have plethora of data we need to interpret what the message the data is giving the data can be a boon to us literally to identify the insights so to interpret this large amount of data we use visualization then make data engaging when we see a table we we don't find it appealing enough to keep the user engaging a visualization is the best fit understand the story flow firstly we see okay what are the high level sales on the second chart we see what is my percent growth or decrease in the sales and so on i will go on digging deeper until i find the reason why my sales have impacted so that i can work on it okay so that is a story flow that we built on the dashboard using the visualizations of course then we identify the trends and outliers say for example if we have um, the if we have a class of 80 people and everybody's percentage are being marked in on a graph and if one or two people who haven't maybe who haven't attempted the exam have got zero in their um, in their marks or pointers okay then that will be a outlier an exception so similar case happens in the sales also wherein sometimes we see that there is a there's some exceptional sales it can be a good thing as well also a bad thing say a product is not getting sold at all in in last quarter in last three quarters if the product is not getting a uh, sale then we can stop its production so what happens is this is an outlier for us and what action are we taking we will try to increase the quality maybe we will try to uh, add promotions onto that product or if it even if uh, after doing all the steps it doesn't work then we can stop the production of that product okay so identifying the trends and outliers help us in such a way the next point is to focus on the areas that need improvement as we rightly uh, had hit that particular item that identifying the outliers and trends we see we focus on the uh, on the area that needs improvement okay the last point is enable better decision making that is that comes handy it definitely definitely enables us to make better decisions okay i hope um, everything was clear until now so let us move on to the next topic so enough of the overview let us dig deeper into data visualization let us understand what is the process the end to end process of building a dashboard uh, and using the visualization tools and techniques it will be fun let us start so this is a high level process that i put in here firstly gathering the data now there are multiple sources of data available it can be healthcare data there can be sports data there can be sales data there can be students data and you name it and you have the data available and with the rise of usage of social media and internet and online shopping we also have a lot of crawl data that is the online data the sales data or by online shopping so firstly we gather the data from multiple sources that are available and we order it into categories okay that this is these are the sales data this is my uh, this card this is my particular data of such and such category we categorize the data that is the first step high level step i would say the major important part before starting with any development or any visualization is of course cleaning the data and mining it uh, getting some meaning out of the data we are trying to do that before we move on to the visualization itself because the data should make sense okay so it is really very important to assess the data that exists 
so that it is in the usable format it doesn't have uh, it doesn't have any formatting format issues the number format the day format issues the space bar the blanks these are very basic things that i'm seeing but there are usually very complexities which have which have to be cleaned before we move it into the database the next part is that once the data is cleaned and mined we move the data into the database we build a model before going on to the visualization and determine what are the important fields that I'm going to require for my analysis. Uh, the fields which are irrelevant can be hidden or can be removed. Okay, and we finalize the methodology. Now, uh, many a times what happens is we do analysis using data science, using our algorithms, and we predict, we predict what if we continue to follow this particular uh, actions or trends, then what will our sales look like going ahead? For example, in the pandemic, in any pandemic, there can be an algorithm put to analyze that if the lockdown has been kept for 20 days, 20 more days, what can be the count in 20 days? Given the current scenario, is extended for 20 more days. So such forecasted data can be produced using the data science algorithms. And that particular forecasted data can be shown on the charts for better understanding. So it is all interrelated and it is all really very exciting. And it is necessary for us to build onto one another to make better decisions. Lastly, once we are done with the database modeling and exploratory analysis on the data, we move on to the visualization. Now for visualization, there are many tools which are available depending on your requirement or depending on what your client is demanding, you have to choose a visualization tool which is appropriate for you. Maybe you want a free source or open source visualization technique on which you want to develop. There are many free, uh, open source technologies available as well. And there are also paid softwares available for visualization, okay? So on the visualization step, it is a very important part to understand and identify what are my best methods or visuals that I need to use to show this particular information. Otherwise, the analysis is of no use if we just put keep on putting the uh, irrelevant charts or visuals or graphs, right? Okay, so I hope uh, the, the process, the, I hope the process is clear. Let us move on to the third part, which is what are the various tools and techniques used for visualization? Yeah, so there are quite a few and there's the liberty for anyone who loves to code, who they can go ahead, simply go ahead with the d3.js and react part, the plot, the plotly part, wherein these are nothing but the libraries which are built with the charts, with different uh, variety of charts to choose from. So d3.js is a JavaScript library and it gives us dynamic and interactive data visualizations in web browser. Basically, it also uses HTML and CSS, which is used for web development. Then also React, it is also an open source front end JavaScript library and it is used to build interfaces or UI components. It, is, it can also be used for data visualization. Plotly is a data visualization library using R and Python. Then the uh, then there are the other um, data visualization software which are paid. Basically, they are more sophisticated, I would say, and there is not much coding that you need to do in that particular thing. Yes, you need to write the calculations to show your growth or sales or whatever KPI. KPI is nothing but key performance indicator any calculations or any measure you want to write, of course, that we have to write. But from scratch, you need not build a chart. It is already there for you to select. So one of the major tool which is extensively used worldwide is Tableau. And it is a data visualization software and users can create their reports and dashboards using this interface. Similar to Tableau, uh, there's Power BI, which is gaining its momentum recently in this years in this two to three years and it is the analytics service by microsoft and it has interactive visualizations and business intelligence facility let me highlight here that excel 
is not as simple as it sounds. Excel has quite a few uh, functionalities and features which are very relevant and they are used till date. Excel is used till date for data visualization and making decisions because it is it is not just a tool for addition and subtraction in the table, but it can be used for multiple, multiple ways, um, helpful ways. And so Excel also provides charts and graphs for data analysis and visualization. These are just a handful of them, which I've noted here. There are also some other, okay. There are also some other, let me just check if the recording has stopped. Okay, now it is continuing. Okay, so apart from this handful of tools and techniques, there are also many others which are listed here, like ClickView, Oracle Visual Analyzer, Jupyter, SAP, Lumda, and Google Charts. Okay, there's a lot of uh, lot of area wherein a uh, lot of area and lot of learning in this particular field. And I would say if you are curious enough, just go ahead and deep dive into it. You, I'm sure you'll learn it, and side by side you'll have fun while learning and implementing it. Because data visualization, according to me, is not only coding or putting in information into charts, but it also strikes a chord with the creative side inside you, right? It makes you more creative. Okay, moving ahead, I wanted to quickly show the interface of Power BI, one of the tools that I discussed, I just discussed. So the, once you open Power BI software, for visualizing data. We see this particular interface or layout, as you may say, and there are multiple options given here. Let us uh, have a high level look at them. Firstly, here we can insert the data. Basically, we're connecting to the data source, which is in the database that we had seen in the process, that we're connecting to the data source. Uh, it can be uh, an Excel data, Excel, but Excel sheet or the SQL Server or Azure analysis uh, data. Okay, we need to connect the data first. Once the data is connected, here is the option for creating relationship between the tables. If there are more than one uh, table, then we can create relationship based on the primary key in the table. If it is not already created from the backend, we can do that here in this particular field. Okay, next we have fields once the data is loaded we get the details and all the column by column information listed in this particular section which is fields and based on this fields we can then move on to the visualizations part here to select the chart and proceed with the story yeah so based on the requirement we need to select the chart based on the kpi the key performance indicator that we are going to show we will be selecting the chart and we'll be proceeding with our visualization. Okay, now this is page one. This is one particular tab. Okay, there can be multiple pages. Say page one is showing me the information at the high level. On page two, I will go a little deeper. On page three, I will go at the basic level, at the very basic level and show the insights, right? So these pages are nothing but the tabs or different sheets that we have yeah now it's a similar kind of layout we have for tableau okay and just the structuring is different but the functionality is the same firstly we need to connect the data then once the data is connected we see the dimensions and measures in the data we can also create more measures as i had said earlier we need to create calculations to show our fields and measures to show our information into graphs okay so if you remember the example that we had seen on the third or fourth slide wherein we saw percentage growth versus last year so that is nothing but the calculation that we are doing we can do it on the measures part okay once that is done we need to select the chart that we need to show and show that information in and like page and tab uh, like we had page in Power BI, we have sheet in Tableau, okay? We can have more than one sheet. Sheet one can be used for executive as a high level overview of information, okay? And then digging into why, what does my sale look like? 
period wise or monthly at the monthly level on the first sheet i can have it at the yearly level on the second sheet i can have it at the monthly level so i go on drilling down deeper and it answers my questions more and more questions as we move on to more sheets and more tabs okay yeah so quickly i will show you so we till now before moving on to the templates and examples i would like to uh, just walk through all the points that we had gone through we understood what data visualization is we understood the process the end-to-end -end process we we also saw a very simple example with the table having the sales data and just besides it we saw how uh, impactful the visualization was regarding the same then we saw the different kinds of tools and techniques we have for data visualization so when we follow this process end-to-end -end process of data visualization when we are preparing a dashboard to show a story line after that particular dashboard is built it looks something like this that we're just going to see into the next slide okay are you ready yeah so we see that there are multiple options available. There's also maps available that we can show on the visualization part. Okay, based on the requirement, we can keep the visualization. So here we can see that there's a calendar being used. When I select first, I see that uh, on first, maybe if this, it's the sale day, sales data, then we see that on first, the blue color uh, mark shows me that the sales were high in these regions. Okay. So such story flow can be developed using using dashboards, using visualizations. The second part is when we start at the high level using a pie chart, and then we drill it down uh, further using a bar chart, and then finally onto the period level, wherein we see the trend line. Okay. Some other template can be this, wherein we have, um, you know this particular numbers that we see 19 and percentage this is just a sample sheet that i've taken here to show the example yeah so the numbers that we see are 19 and percent decrease or increase these are the uh, kpis or the key performance indicators see i uh, i don't have much time to go through all the sheets of the dashboard to go through all the visualization to go through all the data what i would do is if i just have one to two minutes if i open a dashboard if i open a visualization i see that okay we are decreasing by the color and the down arrow that i see here we are decreasing by some such and such percentage the overall um, sales is good looks good okay so at some point at, at some region say country a the sales are decreasing but in some other country the sales is increasing so i get the high level idea by using such arrows and uh, color coding and also the numbering you know the formatting of the text okay so that is what i was saying when i said that this area will not only increase your curiosity but also your creativity okay? you'll become a designer in, in a way okay so something else so the dark mode is quite uh, a trend uh, currently and the dashboards then if everywhere then why not in dashboards as well right the dashboards also have the dark mode which can be implemented in dark mode so based on you know, the users or the clients we can select what kind of color coding we need do we need to keep it subtle like the one we have here or do we um, need to make it more dramatic to get the dark effect also so it is just a very vast field and a lot of lot of charts to select from and once you dive into it uh, i'm sure you'll really enjoy it okay so lastly coming on to some frequently asked questions on data visualization or data analysis per se so basically data visualization is extensively used in business analytics basically first question that will cater is why is data visualization necessary I'm sure by now, even you will be an, uh, able to answer whether uh, why is data visualization necessary, right? So for the ease of it, let us go through the answer. The process of data analysis in large data sets is critical, right? When we have a lot of data, the analysis can't be done if such facets are not available, if charts are not available, if the data is not cleaned enough, right? So Data visualization is an easiest way to get the analysis done and it 
speeds the things up it provides clarity okay so if i'm a newbie and i want to learn this particular skill then what before learning or before diving into data visualization what is the skill set that i need to have what, what is the prerequisite that i need to have or learn before learning data visualization i would say uh, nothing just curiosity to learn and explore the field because it just starts when you start learning it okay you you need nothing before you just need curiosity and inquisitive nature to learn the skills third part third question is how much time will it take to become an expert in this so i think this is such a vast field that how much ever you work on it there'll be some part on it which will which you'll be missing or which you learn daily while you're doing it okay so once you select a familiar technology or software that you'll be going for for data visualization be it d3.js be it react or be it tableau or power bi you just need to practice and how can you practice we can practice by if not professionally if not at the professional level we can also practice it by using the free data sets that are there there are many websites like kaggle which provide free data sets which can be used for practicing purpose okay now the main question is where should i learn from so there is there is a plethora of helpful resources available online paid as well as free and uh, and i would suggest that uh, the free ones according to my experience are also very very good and there are also data sets available as i said on which you can explore in excel also to start with to just understand what data visualization is how are these charts uh, made what what key points should i keep in mind before creating a chart before creating a visualization before creating a story flow so excel is also a very good place to start with it okay the last is what are the challenges that can be faced yes of course while it is not a, a all gold and glitter situation while we are developing a dashboard of course there are challenges so the data can be of poor quality some of the major uh, uh, month data can be missing due to some reason right that uh, the uh, the data collectors did not collect the data for some month by some reason due to some reason so data data is missing there's poor quality of data then data is from multiple sources and we would not understand how to merge them how to join them all it becomes quite a tedious and complex process then and it is always a good practice to get uh, get the best visualization or get the best solution out of the data resources that are available to you but there's always one page turn unturned wherein one page left unturned wherein uh you could have used those particular points to get the best out of it best out of the data so always it is a challenge to get the best out of the available data always so there is always a scope of improvement in the way you um, show the insight in the way you create the dashboard okay apart from that i have also put down two links one is for tableau and one is for power bi both of them are free and if you wish if you are curious enough you can definitely go and start learning already yeah so that was it with the frequently asked questions regarding data visualization and to wrap this particular session i would like to bring up this particular quote by john tricky he says that the greatest value of a picture is when it forces us to notice what we never expected to see sometimes it happens in the tabular format in the data we we don't see any uh, outcome or any such impactful decision or impactful trend impactful story which suddenly a visualization or a chart forces us to notice and then we quickly take action on it so on this note uh, i would wrap it wrap the tech talk and i hope it was really helpful for you and i wish you all the very best happy learning and keep visualization visualizing thank you